Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today we're checking out a Huckins Atlantic 44 that's up for sale. At the time of shooting this video, we were at asking price of $445,000. I've been very fortunate to be able to review several Huckins yachts for my channel, and I can honestly say if I could keep any of them, this is the boat I would go for. And truthfully, with over 100 videos on my channel, this is probably going to make the short list of the boats I could keep of everything I've reviewed so far. She has the appearance of a Huckins from the 60s, but this one was actually launched in 2006. She has got complete fiberglass construction. It's not cold molded, but fiberglass. 2006 also means it's far easier to get finance and insurance. But better yet, this one went through a complete refit in 2019 and 2020, including new engines, transmission, generator, electronics, and much more. So we make our way around the deck. I love the handholds that's in place on both sides. For a boat of this size, she's got wide passages as well. And on the bow, you'll find a Lumar windlass. It can be operated from the helm or from the deck. There's a 35 pound plow anchor. A combination of chain and nylon road, and both the chain and road have been recently replaced. I'm gonna pan the camera back around. You'll see that classic Huckins design. And all the superstructure was painted in 2021, and I was done at Cracker Boy and the hull has been repainted in 2020 and that was performed here at Huckins. Being a Huckins, if you're interested in offshore fishing, you'll love the aft cockpit. There's plenty of space in here for going offshore fishing. There's rod holders on either side. We also have a transom gate that leads out to the bathing platform. And I love the quality of the woodwork finish that's on this one. And on the bathing platform itself, we've also got boarding ladders. So if you're into swimming or diving, this could be a perfect option for you as well. This one's got a ton of storage options for you, including the lazarette that is here in the aft cockpit. And in the lazarette, we actually have spare props included with the sail of the boat as well. We also have multiple storage lockers. And these are perfect for storing your ropes, fenders, anything you possibly need close at hand. And these are located in both the port and starboard side. But in the port one, there's actually an ice maker that's been included in that storage locker. I like the push button lock system that's in place. You don't need to worry about these doors popping off while the boat's underway or if you ever hit rough weather. And I also like the fact that in the aft cockpit there is actually an outdoor shower and that way you can rinse off before heading inside. And when you do step inside, you're going to get the best of both worlds. You're going to get that classic Huckins. But as I say, this is a very modern boat. I love the visibility you've got, not only from those large windows, but also from the canopy covers with the eyes and glass inserts. I love how you've got access on both the port and starboard side to the deck, both for cruising but also for whenever you come into the marinas and harbours. There's plenty of luxurious seating out here for your family and friends to join you and there's storage underneath these seats. And I love the carpet that's on this one. It looks like a teak deck but this is all carpet. That way it's far easier to clean, especially if you are into things like fishing. Also much cheaper and easier to replace if you ever need to down the road. And that hatch leads to the engine room, which I'll show you later on. And at the helm, you've got the captain's seat, but you've also got an additional seat here, which you'll probably get two adults on in comfort. And the lower helm does actually come with AC, so you can cruise out here regardless of the weather. Perfect for a Scotsman now living in Florida. As we make our way over to the helm itself, I like that classic ship's wheel, and I like the touch of wood finish that you've got throughout the helm. Helps give the boat that little bit of character, especially having a classic Huckins design. Well, this is not an old boat by any means. You've got bow thruster on this one. You see here we've got the Garmin multifunction display. We've got the Horizon VHF. This one's got a Garmin autopilot. There's even a forward looking sonar. You've got full engine instrumentation. And most of that list that I just read off is actually being replaced recently, including the new bow thruster. And as much as I've got no issues or concerns with the navigation equipment included, I love the layout of the dash, so that if you ever did want to upgrade the electronics in the future, there's plenty of room here if you ever want to personalise that to suit your own taste and requirements. And a quick rundown for you, this one's got a length overall of 44 feet 10 inches. She's got a beam of 13 feet and a maximum draft of 3 feet. She has a displacement of 28,000 pounds. Fuel capacity of 406 gallon, fresh water capacity 115 gallon, and a holding tank capacity of 28 gallon. The measurement for the height is being reviewed because this one actually didn't have the flybridge included when it was first launched. 
which you could be easily made to suit the great loop. And the easiest way to do that is include a folding mast, which I'll show you on the fly bridge when we get up there, instead of the fixed place mast that's currently in place. I also like the fact you've got as much space for laying out charts. As much as I love the navigation equipment, you've still got to be able to rely on the old paper charts as well. An empty port that leads down to the lower accommodation. Just a few short steps down, and when you step in here, my first impression was I loved the headroom. I'm six foot two and I didn't have any issues walking in here. I like how bright and airy this cabin feels. You've got the large windows, but you've also got a lot of bright colours, as well as plenty of artificial light included. On the starboard side we've got the saloon with a large wrap round leather sofa. There is storage underneath these seats, but we also have these panels above the seats with a storage in there as well. Underneath the seats you'll also find a 16,000 BTU AC unit. And in these lockers we've got drinks cabinets. For keeping your refreshments close at hand for your friends and family on board. And as I start to pan the camera around, you can see those large windows that we have. Most of these windows are actually opening windows, so you get extra ventilation if you wanted. All the interior was replaced in 2019-2020, as all the interior has been painted and wallpapered, fresh varnish. A replacement cost would easily be over a million dollars but it feels like you're stepping into a brand new yacht whenever you're on this one. It really is a great opportunity. That won't be on the market for long. And then on the port side is where you've got the galley. You've got a Princess 2 burner electric range. You've also got a Sub-Zero fridge. you get the stainless steel sink. And you've got a microwave oven. And plenty of cabinet space and worktop space for preparing all your favourite meals and snacks. And I like the fact you've got an opening window right next to the galley. That way if you are cooking you get plenty of ventilation coming in and let any steam or smoke out without filling up the boat. Moving forward down this passageway you'll first come across the guest stateroom in the port hand side. This has got upper and lower single berths. We've got hanging lockers in here as well as pull out drawers and even this far forward in the boat there's still plenty of headroom as you're walking through. And I like the way they've used a sliding door that way you get more space in this cabin. And if you were a couple looking to tackle the Great Loop, I like the fact that you've got this option of converting this into almost like shelves, the way that it's bunk beds. That way you get extra storage for long distance cruising. Opposite this cabin and starboard sides where you'll find the heads compartment. This definitely has a yacht finish to it. I love all the storage for your toiletries and personal belongings. And you've got a Y valve for this one where you can actually flush the toilet and the shower directly overboard or it can lead into the holding tank. And there's a separate shower compartment tucked behind this door. And although there's only one hedge compartment on this yacht, this one can be accessed directly from the owner's stateroom. So you still have that extra privacy. And the owner's stateroom benefits from a centerline queen size berth. There's a ton of storage in this stateroom from hanging lockers on both the port and starboard side. I like the little ledges that was on the port and starboard side. Now if this was my yacht, I can see me put my cell phones up there, tablet, things like that, charge up the camera batteries overnight. You also have enough space on top of these lockers that you could easily fit some sort of small television up here. Place your laptop, something like that, if you ever wanted to lay in the cabin and watch a movie. And then again, you can see we've got access directly into the head compartment from the stateroom. And then as we head back out, I also wanted to highlight that this one's got courtesy lights throughout. You can see that leading into the saloon. It's just a simple touch, but not only does it bring a touch of class and elegance to it, but I always think these are great safety features if you're ever staying on board at night, especially when you've got steps involved. And then again, you can see that on the steps leading out of the saloon and galley area up to the cockpit. And as I mentioned before, the engines for this, you can access them underneath a hatch in the main cockpit area. And you're looking at a pair of Cummins. These are 5.9 litre engines, approximately 380 horsepower each at 3000 RPM. These engines only have 325 hours on the clock. Well, they are coupled to new ZF transmissions with a ratio of 1.57. These are good to give you a cruising speed somewhere in the region of 24 knots. And in the right conditions, you can expect to hit 30 knots out of this one. I love how accessible this is, how bright it is, and how much room you have. I also like the way they've got all the maintenance components easily accessible. Things like your oil and water separator, checking coolant levels, and notice how clean and dry the bilges are. 
and down here we've also got a number of the electrical components have been upgraded all new batteries it's got a new Xantrex inverter there's a new isolation transformer as I pan the camera around you'll see that underneath the steps just behind the engine room we'll have got a new Onan generator this is a 9 kilowatt generator and this has got approximately 287 hours on the clock and this was also replaced during the 2020 refit that the boat had carried out I also like the time and effort that somebody's put into labelling everything down here especially when it comes to the electrical side of things if you ever did need to carry out any repairs, replacements or upgrade, it'd be easy to identify what all the connections are. And if we pop back up, I also wanted to show you the flybridge on this yacht. You access the flybridge from the aft cockpit. It's got ladders up here. I really like how solid and sturdy they felt. And also pretty deep as well. I've got size 15 feet and normally I struggle climbing up to some flybridge. But I didn't have any issues on this one. And I like how spacious the flybridge is on this one. You also have a lot of storage compartments up here. You got the helm to starboard. And the helm does include the ACR remote control searchlight. You got a Ritchie magnetic compass, standard horizon VHF. And that's a Garmin GPS multifunction display, as well as having vessel view. And this flybridge is large enough where you can have your family and friends up here with you. You got a standalone seat that is free moving to port. And then along the back of the flybridge, you'll see we've got vinyl seat cushions and covers. And you'll probably get two adults here in comfort. And the flybridge benefits from a new Bimini canopy cot. It's stainless steel frame, giving you plenty of shade and protection when you want or need it. But this is easily collapsible if you ever want to drop that down for height restrictions. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are worried about height restrictions, if you're tackling something like the Great Loop, this one's got a fixed mast in place, but Huckins does have the option of working with you and they can reconfigure this to be a drop and folding mast. But for those looking at taking this offshore where height's not an issue, you'll also notice in the back of the flybridge we've got rod holders up here. And I like the fact that from the helm you can see over the aft cockpit, so if you are offshore fishing you get plenty of help and guidance, and that way you can make sure the boat's always in place whenever you're landing that catch. I'd like to thank Huckins once again for the opportunity to come on board and take a look at this one. Love to hear your thoughts and comments, if you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really does make a difference. And I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.